Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today we're going to learn how to use the new mobile editor in Squarespace 7.1. With the launch of the new Fluid Engine for Squarespace came an amazing new independent mobile editor. Squarespace's older classic editor automatically adapted existing desktop designs for mobile screens and while this was convenient, it was also really restrictive because you couldn't really control the way your mobile site looked. There are so many people browsing websites on their phones that mobile design is just as important, if not more important, than your desktop site these days. So now the Squarespace 7.1 Fluid Engine mobile editor is almost completely separate from desktop, meaning that you can move everything independently from mobile and it doesn't affect your desktop site. Now this definitely requires a bit of extra work because you're almost designing two different designs per page or per section, but in this day and age with the importance of both desktop and mobile views, this kind of editing is necessary. If you're brand new to Squarespace 7.1 Fluid Engine, Editor, I highly recommend you check out our last video, which was all about how to use the desktop page editor. If you learn the fundamentals of this first, you're going to find mobile editing so much easier. So definitely check that out first. I will try to link it up here, but if that doesn't work, I will link it below the video too. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty quick video today as I've already filmed a whole video tutorial on how to edit in Squarespace 7.1 Fluid Engine so how to actually edit within those Fluid Engine sections. But I did want to touch on the mobile editing because what's new about Fluid Engine is the fact that we can edit our mobile site independently from our desktop. Now this is a bit of a controversial point. I know some of you are really reluctant to doing two sets of edits, one for desktop and one for mobile, but actually I think it's really not that hard and if you want to just keep it super simple, you can do so but you do need to check your mobile site every time you design a page or a section and just make sure it looks good. You don't have to do anything too advanced. You don't have to add new blocks or rearrange things too much. You totally can if you want to, and I personally would because I think optimizing for mobile and making things look good on mobile is just as important as desktop these days. But if you just wanna keep it simple, you can do that too. So you'll just click edit on your page like normal. And this is just a silly little layout I was playing with before in the previous video. I'm going to click on the G to bring up that grid. And in that video, we went through all of the important block settings and how to position things in the grid and best practices for doing so. But today we're going to talk about mobile. So if you didn't watch that previous video, I highly, highly recommend it because all of those things I talked about in that video and I will link that video down below. We talked all about the block settings, moving things around, and all of that same stuff applies exactly to mobile too. So essentially the mobile editor uses the exact same editing experience as desktop. It's just in a mobile size. So it's great, you don't have to relearn anything. Once you know how to edit in desktop, you know how to edit in mobile, and it adjusts the screen size for you so you can actually see what you're doing. Obviously, things are a lot smaller on mobile and the screen size is completely different. So it is important to adjust and make sure everything looks good on mobile. And that's always been the case. But now we can actually do it independently. So first, let's talk about how our sections automatically adapt. So previously in the classic editor, the mobile sections adapted depending on where things were positioned on desktop. So if you had an image, then a text, then an image within your section, it would be the same on mobile. You'd have an image, text, and image. This sounds good in theory, but actually it meant that a lot of the time when you were creating advanced, beautiful layouts on desktop, things would look pretty wacky on mobile, and you actually couldn't change that. Now in Fluid Engine, we have this whole separate editor, and the way things immediately adapt from mobile, which might seem a little bit strange at first, but I can see why they've done this, is that the blocks are in order of when we added them on your desktop site. So for example, I first added this image block, then I added this text, then I added a button block, and then I went and added another image block at the end. So if I go to mobile, you'll see that we have the image, the text, the button, and the image. So it's literally just stacking them in order of when we added them, which seems a little bit odd, but in my head it makes sense because if you have a completely separate design on mobile and you want it to be completely independent from desktop, 
there is no real right way to add the blocks to mobile. It's not going to be able to interpret your new mobile design in the way you add blocks to desktop and create a whole new mobile design for you. It's just going to stack them in the order that you added them. So that actually makes sense to me and it will involve a bit of rearranging but it doesn't have to involve much rearranging. So if we were keeping it simple, honestly, you could just leave it like this. Or you could maybe replicate this sort of overlap you had here at the top. So maybe I would bring this image in a little bit, pull this one up, and sort of replicate something similar to what we've done on desktop. Then of course, I would just need to pull these other elements down so that they're not overlapping. And there you go, that took about two seconds and it looks really good. It's not something that could have been done automatically. And it also is very similar to what we have on desktop. So if that's what you wanna do, it really only takes a couple of seconds just to tweak. Now, of course, it's gonna take longer if you wanna do something very advanced, but at least you have the option. So one area that it's easy to get hung up on this independent mobile editor is that it's not 100% independent. And I do think Squarespace is probably going to continue adding to this. So hopefully some of these things that I talk about will be improved upon soon. The biggest thing that's independent is that you can position the blocks differently. So you can see that I just moved all of these blocks around and nothing changed on desktop. Everything is still where it is. The other thing that is independent is the row count. So we talked about the row count in the last video and how you can adjust this to make your section bigger or smaller. And if you come to mobile, you can see the row count here is 26. It was 17 on desktop and the row count is completely independent from desktop to mobile. So those two things are completely independent where you position your images and the amount of rows you have. And just these two things open up a lot of design possibility for mobile, but there are some things to look out for that actually aren't independent that you might assume are. One of the biggest ones that I find, and I really hope they change this, is text alignment. So if you highlight your text, and let's say on mobile, I really want this text to be center aligned because it just looks better within this section. If I go to desktop, you'll notice that now my text on desktop has been center aligned, which is not something that I want. So this is a biggie that will copy over from desktop to mobile if you adjust it. I hope this is something that Squarespace changes, but it's just something to keep in mind. Another alignment setting that doesn't seem to be independent yet is your container or block alignment. So we talked about this in the last video, all about what the setting is for. Now I've noticed that sometimes this happens and sometimes it doesn't. So it makes me think that Squarespace is potentially making the alignment independent for mobile and desktop, which would actually be very helpful because it is a setting that could make a big difference between the two screen sizes. So we'll wait and see with that one, but just pay attention that if you do align something specifically on mobile, it's gonna transfer over to desktop too. So I'll just show you quickly with this button. If I go ahead and align it to the left on mobile and open it up on desktop, you'll see that it's actually moved to the left also on desktop. So it would be great if we could have that sort of just a simple alignment setting. And I think that would make a big difference to our desktop versus mobile sites. So those are really the things to look out for when it comes to adjusting block settings and where things are going to shift and where things are going to stay the same. So just keep those things in mind. And if you need to, just toggle back and forth a few times and make sure everything looks good on both screen sizes. Now, I wanna talk about best practices for mobile. I'm not gonna talk about block settings or adjusting within the grid because we really went over that in previous videos. But I will touch on best practices again, and these do sort of overlap with the desktop best practices that I talked about in the last video. So the first tip is something that I mentioned in the last video. With the grid, you can actually extend past the grid. So you have these grid edges here. You can see it's sort of the grid stops here, but you can pull past it if you want something to be flush with the edge. Now on mobile and desktop, this can look really, really cool with images or graphics that you're trying to purposefully pull to the edge. But when it comes to text, 
I really don't recommend doing this because you're going to have text butted right up to the edge of your mobile and it's just going to be really hard to read and it's not going to adapt well for different mobile screen sizes. So I really only recommend pulling right out to the edge very purposefully and with images only. Now the next point that I want to make is really important. If you haven't watched that desktop video, please pay attention to this. And if you have, still pay attention because this happens just as easily on mobile as it does on desktop. So just being very intentional about the blocks you're overlapping and not overlapping blocks accidentally. So you can see here we have two blocks overlapping and we've done this very intentionally. It's supposed to look like this. They're both images that are set to fill. So we know that they're gonna look pretty good on all screen sizes and we can see that they're overlapped. It's very purposeful. Where people accidentally get hung up is unintentionally overlapping blocks where it's not so obvious. So with the text block or a button block, it's quite easy to overlap these and not realize that you've done so. So you can see the design looks exactly the same as it did before. And if I turn off the grid and don't look at any of the block containers, it's not obvious that anything is overlapping. But if I pay attention to where I've just dragged those block containers, you can see that the text block is actually overlapping the button block and the button block is overlapping the text block. And while this looks fine right now on this exact screen size, if someone is looking at this on a different phone screen size, which is very, very common, we may get some overlap. So it's harder to show you, but if you watch the last video, I'll show you what that looks like on desktop. And you can see that when this adjusts, this text will just continue moving in its own container and it will overlap the button eventually and that doesn't look good. So to avoid that, we just wanna be really careful where we've dragged our block containers and we don't want them overlapping. So I'm gonna take this back to where it was before. I'm gonna move this button down to its own grid space. And you can see now that these two block containers are very separate, they're not overlapping. And now as the screen size changes, they're just going to make room for each other rather than overlapping each other. So that is what you want. You don't want your text unintentionally overlapping over something because that makes it unreadable and unstable on different screen sizes. So I think this is quite easy to miss on mobile. So just every time you do a section, be very intentional of looking at your blocks and making sure that they've got their own room to breathe and they're not overlapping unless of course the overlapping is intentional. The other thing that I would mention, especially for mobile, is when you're designing in your mobile section, I find that a lot of the time you get all of this extra row space added on, especially if you're doing something more complex and you're moving stuff around. Sometimes you'll finish up your mobile section and you'll realize that you have all of this extra space at the bottom. I've found this a lot when I've been designing in mobile. So it's just something to keep in mind once you've finished your mobile section design. Just remember to remove those rows or if you're having trouble using that button there, you can just click edit section and reduce the rows here. So that's just something I've found when I've been designing a mobile a lot, removing any extra rows that have been randomly added to the bottom of your section. So that's pretty much it for editing mobile. If you have a good understanding of how to edit on the desktop site, you're not gonna have any issues in mobile because essentially it's exactly the same. Just keep an eye out for those things that are independent and aren't independent. And when you have an idea of what those are, it does make it really easy to create some really cool things for mobile. And again, I just wanna reiterate the fact that even though you do have to check every section for mobile, you really should have been doing that anyway on Squarespace because that is best practice. And if you want to keep it really simple, just let those blocks stack. If anything's in the wrong order, all you need to do is just quickly rearrange the order and you're good to go. Let me know again in the comments how you're feeling about Fluid Engine. And also if there's any other particular tutorials you want, please let me know because obviously there's a lot of new stuff here, a lot of new content to learn. And we really wanna help people learn Fluid Engine because I know it's been very stressful for a lot of people having this big new change and I can attest that I was stressed about it too, but after spending lots of time playing around and learning, now that I've learned it, 
I feel much more confident and much more at ease with this big change that's come. So I want you to feel like that too. If there's anything else you want to learn, please, please let us know in the comments and we will definitely record tutorials for you. I do think it's important to mention too that if you don't want to start from scratch with Fluid Engine and you're struggling with figuring out how to make a nice layout, all of our Squarespace 7.1 templates on our website are all converted to Fluid Engine now. So not only do they come with a beautiful design to start with so that you don't have to start from scratch and all you have to do is just go in and tweak the colors, replace the images, but they also come with our full Fluid Engine tutorials. So we've recorded hours of tutorials on Fluid Engine. And if you really want to learn Fluid Engine quickly and get a site up quickly without having to do it all from scratch, definitely check out our templates because they're a beautiful design to start with that make it so easy and you get all of the tutorials for Fluid Engine that you might ever need. And of course, we keep everything updated much faster in there than we do on YouTube for our paid customer. So definitely check that out at bigcatcreative.com slash templates. I will link it down below also. And if you have any questions about those, just comment below and we'll get back to you ASAP. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.